Welcome to the virtual tour of Transform, Exploring Languages of Healing, an exhibition of artworks by myself, Alana Gail Kibbe. Within the metamorphosis of healing and all potentiality of liberation, we are dynamically propelled both within ourselves and into stunning reconstructions of interdependence. Through these upheavals, languages of healing emerge giving birth to total transformation into new aliveness. To heal is to rise, to heal is to transform. Transform, Exploring Languages of Healing, is a body of work that I created between 2018 and 2022 while in transformation through breast cancer and multiple complex disabilities. This work is born out of the spaces within me where to live, I must break apart. Transform seeks to deconstruct the languages of healing, and in exploration of various versions of healing, I have moved through and between. The cocoon, grief, rising through metaphorical death, re-becoming stardust, finding home within, discovering flights of freedom, releasing the costume, and transformation. I'd like to give thanks to the Canadian Language Museum, the Social Science and Humanities Research Council of Canada, New College at the University of Toronto, the Faculty of Liberal Arts and Professional Studies at York University, the Center for Feminist Research, Sensorium Center for Digital Arts and Technology, the Department of English at York University, the School of Gender and Women's Studies at York University, the DG Ivy Library, the Institute for the History and Philosophy of Science and Technology at the University of Toronto, the support of the Fields Institute for Research in Mathematical Sciences, and with appreciation for collaboration with the Art Size Salon. This work would not be possible without the love and care of my loved ones and community. Um, I have dedicated this body of work to the memories of Mahalia Freed and Sandra Felice, um, both dear friends who died of cancer. Hope Cocoon is the first work in the series representing the cocoon version of healing. I put this piece together when I was initially healing uh, as a communication for how wrapped up in the process of healing, how fully embedded in it I was. It shows here two skeletal bodies wrapped around each other in holding and protection within a womb-like cocoon. Despite lightning striking and the river attempting to wash the self away, the cactus flowers bloom under the dark sky. Transformed into all the new versions of the self that can become, the raven sits atop the cocoon, guarding one of the skeleton's hearts for safekeeping. The other heart remains within the cocoon, giving life to both figures. The cocoon as a mode of healing wraps us up in our own resilience and reminds us that we can't fight healing. Healing is not a reintegration of wellness, but a becoming of wholeness. Representing both the deepest holding of the inner self while in transformation and the reconfiguration of that which is not yet present but sure to come soon. The cocoon is the pause in the in-between. The cocoon gives us the tools of contemplation, perspective, solace, rest, self-compassion, and the cultivation of our internal gardens. The second piece in the series is Tributaries of Grief. It's created with acrylics on linen, and the mode of healing represented is grief. The boundaries of our bodies break. Everything we were supposed to keep inside us now falls out through the waters of our tears, and then we become the earth, its gardens, its root structures, its rivers. In this painting, a weeping skeletal image is seen amongst flowers under a sun at dusk. Her bones and ethereal body growing roots into the earth. 
She is this earth. She is this sun. She is these tears that fall and the tributaries they grow. Her heart is full and she wraps herself around it, attempting to keep it from falling out too. Grief propels us into our sorrows so deeply that if we surrender to them, we feel like we could float away with them, to be left forever treading the darkest waters of despair. But just as the tears of grief feel like they might flow endlessly, the tides shift and we begin then the repair that follows that purge. Grief gifts us the tools of embracing the whole of the self, including that which is most painful, of surrender, of release, and of hope as deep as the waters of our tears. We're here now at the third piece in the exhibition called Arise. Arise is built from my hospital identification bracelets, sewn and knotted synthetic textiles, scraps of leather, electric tape, hockey tape, fabric tape, staples, wire, an O-ring, VHS film from the Bruce Lee Enter the Dragon film, crow wings, the mode of healing represented is rising through metaphorical death. Through a rise, I tell the story of rising like the phoenix out of the medical industrial machine. The bones of the torso are built out of my hospital wristbands, forming the shape of my rib cage. Upon the spine sits a pair of crow's wings, a reminding of the mystery, mortality, and survival of transformation through rising. The fight embedded in this rising is represented by the inclusion of the Bruce Lee film, Enter the Dragon, whose flowing VHS tape blows beneath the wings as they take flight. Rising through metaphorical death represents the rising into new aliveness through illness, accidents, injury, pain, amputations, and the medical machine that manages them. It gives us the tools of navigation, communication, from it emerges new ways of knowing our own mortality, creating potential for multitudes of new alivenesses. Below the peace sits an altar of transformation, making magic for the rising of our own internal light. The quote embedded in the fabric reads, Pies, para que los quiero, si tengo alas para volar, translating to feet, what do I need them for if I have wings to fly? By Frida Kahlo. Where breasts become stardust is a woven tapestry of self-redemption from the loss of my breasts to cancer to their becoming of stardust throughout the universe. Built from interviews with pathologists and incinerator technicians while engaging in both cartographic study and learning of the history of weaving as a method of storytelling. The work follows the course of my breasts' transit after they left my body. The geographic story of my breasts is embedded here as a treasure map to the imaginary world where they are now stardust, having disappeared like magic into dust after incineration and amputation. Frida Kahlo's inclusion in the fabric pattern Woven in reminds me that paint can free me from my sick bed. Woven in with warm scarves and an old dress that has known dancing. The weaving itself reminds me that we have the power to weave the fabrics of our futures. The multimedia installation component shows us video of the incineration process on the Joy 2000 biological incinerator used by the plant that processed my breasts. On top of the media installation sit stones representing the Judaic recognition of a gravesite. The interactive and durational component involves the weaving in of love letters, prayers, celestial well wishes, and blessings for the completion of this transformation to stardust and in consideration of what participants are healing within themselves. These gifts of community resilience, 
create beautiful interdependence and compassion in the healing process. A participatory memorial, the community care involved, helps complete the cycle of transformation, redemption, and the healing that is embedded within it. Anything can break into a thousand pieces in just a moment, but putting the broken back together in transition towards wholeness, this is the work of both this healing and the healing of the whole earth, which requires the collective. The separateness and independence we have been taught serves those in power instead of humanity, serves deconstruction instead of wholeness, serves remaining broken instead of healing. When we share care with others in their healing, we heal ourselves as well in dynamic exchange. The weaving into the tapestry of these love letters, notes, and prayers infuses this work with the love of community and our futures with mutual aid. The rebecoming of Stardust represents the transformation from the body as a dystopia to the body as a guiding light in the universe. Octavia Butler, in Parable of the Sower, visioned that human destiny must take root amongst the stars, and her perception of destiny as the root of visionary futuristic hopefulness is an example of the potentiality of healing trajectories contained within this multimedia work. The next piece is called Carried Home by Only Bones. It is a piece of acrylics with charcoal on canvas. The mode of healing represented is finding home within. A body's torso is seen clothed, arms draped across itself. The arm's bones are visible as if the skin and muscle around them are transparent or may be illuminated by the heart and its light. The arms wrap around an oversized anatomical heart so big it is almost the size of the whole chest. The heart is representative of homecoming and is cradled by the arms like a child in need of care. From the heart emanates great light. Finding home within represents the cultivation of our relationship with the loving, complex, and dynamic world within oneself. It is the witness of our trials and tribulations keeper of our secrets and daydreams. Rooted in the ways of knowing we carry, it remains unimplicated by the external world. It is not a structure of construction, but of the knowing within the structural interior of the self, of our deepest bare bones. Contained by our bodies, it is the place of birth and death, transformation and reinvention, creation and destruction. The home within is the only world built of everything we are, the dynamic of the internal home overlapping the physical, the transcendent, and all possibility. The next piece is titled Soar and is representative of discovering flights of freedom as a mode of healing. It's created with acrylics on canvas, powdered metal pigments, sheet metal, and wire. The truest freedoms can be found by freeing ourselves within, by opening our hearts to our internal truths, our deepest passions, our creative visions, and our interconnectedness with all life. The listening to this knowings allows us to be freed by that which does not serve us in our highest soaring. Pictured in soar, a woman guides the release of a flock of swallows from the deepest reaches of her heart to be alive in all their truths. The swallows, known in the mystical to symbolize representations of God, are limitless in their flight to freedom. They fly off the canvas into the becoming of everything they are in potential. Soar represents the becoming of feeling free, the discovery of flights of freedom. Becoming free in the context of healing is a way of knowing, thinking, and believing. The body that has felt like a cage does not magically become painless or suddenly repaired, but the cage can be shed by the mind, if even for moments, and the pain and in need of repair reimagined as beautiful, transcendent, and a revolution. This 
next piece is titled Renewal and is representative of the form of healing of releasing the costume. The materials of the textile component include snake sheds, adhesive, fabric, silicone breast prosthetics, suture material, cotton thread, synthetic thread, metal grommets, steel chains, silver, beads, scrap fabric, snakeskin embossed leather, crow skulls, fixatives, and snake vertebrae. Displayed via a wooden coat hanger with a wire hook on an oak coat tree. The materials of the base earth component include willow branches, red dogwood branches, lavender, sagebrush, herbs, a snake skeleton mounted on velvet and wood frame, fabric, a framed base with wood and canvas, adhesive. Many thanks to the old cavern boutique in Montreal, Quebec for the mounting of the snake skeleton and as well to eco stems for the plant material that's woven into the base. The putting down of the costumes we wear in engagement with the external world's expectations of our lives, bodies, choices, and constructions is an enormous lightening. The weight of the world lives within such garments and facades, expectations tinctured in their threads and forms. In renewal, the shedding of these costumes and facades is captured in the multi-representational textile work wherein a costumed bra configured with prosthetic breasts has been reconstructed to be an ectasis. The crow skulls hanging by chains from the base of the costume represent the death of the facade, the power of change, the magic of our truest destinies, and the mysteries of transformation. The textile work hangs on a wooden coat tree that is re-becoming the earth being drawn into the life of plants and their deep roots of healing and medicine. The releasing of the costume propels us into the after of the in-between, the in-between tests, the in-between diagnoses, the in-between statuses of health, the in-between worlds. Territory of Goddess Hecate, the in-between is the land of rising from underworlds when returning to the surface of the earth. The after is the magic of return, the release that allows us to become everything we always were. Allowing the costume to re-become the earth, we rise out of ecstasis into new skin. The last piece in Transform, Exploring Languages of Healing, is titled Metamorphosis and Centrifugal Motion. It's built with acrylics and cold wax, collaged paper, Kafka's The Metamorphosis, and adhesive. The mode of healing represented is transformation. Metamorphosis and Centrifugal Motion is a self-portrait embracing the motion of changes intersection with movement into all possible beautiful futures. We must move forward there is no other direction on this earth, even if modern cognitions of time were to be dismantled. The depiction of this self-portrait is pictured in motion, dancing, a front a city built of Kafka's The Metamorphosis, and a river made of wax-adhered paper collage under a full moon of abundance. Transformation from illness to dancing through life is dramatic like the story of Kafka's metamorphosis and the waking up suddenly in new form. We don't always see our lessons and changes until we are able to look with retrospection. Living in complex bodies can feel like cages that trap us or it can feel like dancing. According to Dr. Ayana Jameson in her Writing Ourselves Through the Apocalypse with Octavia Butler workshop, Disability and chronic illness are transformative forms of existing. Transformation is a form of divinity. This transformation from illness to dancing is a form of divinity. 
of rising beyond and through, of remaining in motion, and of becoming the most beautiful possible futures. <laughs>